So sarcoidosis is a chronic multi-organ granulomatous disorder of unknown etiology. Now that's to say it affects at least two organs. 90% of the time, one of those is pulmonary. It's characterized by granulomas, which are clumpy aggregations of macrophages and other white cells. And then its cause isn't really known. As always, you can remember all this content at the end with my mnemonic. Its pathogenesis involves a susceptible host being exposed to an environmental agent which triggers an inflammatory response. Genetically, HLA-DRB1101 is highly associated with the disease. Potentially responsible infectious agents include mycobacterium tuberculosis, but non-infectious triggers like insecticides might also be possible. The actual inflammation occurs after an antigen-presenting cell picks up this poorly degradable, unknown agent and then presents it to a helper T-cell, which leads to macrophages and other T-cells clustering around to form a non-caseating granuloma. Now, caseation refers to a form of necrosis in other diseases that appears cheese-like or caseous, for example, in tuberculosis. The clinical features associated with sarcoidosis are highly varied in severity and distribution, but pulmonary involvement occurs in most patients 90% of the time, with symptoms including cough and dyspnea. Skin involvement occurs 30% of the time, and there are some classic stigmata, including lupus pernio, which presents like an erythematous indurated plaque on the nose, and erythema nodosum, which presents as tender red nodules on the anterior of the shins, secondary to inflammation of the subcutaneous fat. Ocular involvement occurs 15% of the time, most commonly with anterior uveitis. However, retinitis and blindness are also unfortunate severe manifestations. Hepatobiliary involvement occurs again 15% of the time, manifesting with hepatomegaly and intrahepatic cholestasis. Consider the following investigative and diagnostic approach to sarcoid. If someone has specific features suggestive of sarcoidosis, then you should really consider biopsying that affected organ if that's possible. These features include consistent skin manifestations or eye manifestations or suspicious pulmonary imaging findings. Pulmonary sarcoidosis is classified into four stages from hilar adenopathy to end-stage pulmonary fibrosis. Another key suggestive finding is unexplained hypercalcemia, as granulomas produce vitamin D and ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme as well. In the presence of these findings, a biopsy is usually done via bronchoscopy. If the biopsy, however, is negative and alternative diagnoses don't really have evidence, you should think about three diagnostically supportive tests. One, a serum ACE level, which would be high. Two, a PET scan, which would be positive in multiple organs. And three, a bronchioalveolar lavage. The management of sarcoidosis is based on the level of symptoms and extent in mild symptoms. No specific therapy may be warranted other than lifestyle changes. Limited ocular or skin manifestations might just benefit from topical steroids. Otherwise, severe disease might benefit from systematic therapy using things like steroids, or immunomodulating agents like methotrexate. My mnemonic to remember this content is thinking about sarcoidosis as a fighter pilot jet called ACE-931. ACE stands for the weird stuff, so adenopathy, hypercalcemia, and erythema nodosum. It also reminds me that ACE levels can be performed as a supportive diagnostic test. 90% get pulmonary issues, 30% get skin issues, and 10% get ocular issues. Thanks for watching, Tanzan